Hello everybody, got a fairly short one for you today, or well, hopefully. If I make it too long, that means I've gone all nerdy on you, because today we're going to be talking PCs for astrophotography. <laughs> If you're new to this channel, hello and welcome. I'm Nugsy. This is Cheap Astro. If you've been here before, you'll most likely, quite rightly, assume that I've been running a fairly old PC to do my processing, as I have. Now, when I made my last video showing my gear and setup costs, I did not include a PC or a laptop because I already owned these things. But many people, especially the young these days, think they can get away without having a PC because their phone does it all. But in astrophotography, it does not. You are going to need a fairly capable PC for the processing side of things. Now that's a different story to any sort of PC laptop you might want to use to actually control your gear. That doesn't need to be very special at all. Mine certainly isn't. I've shown my old laptop before. I have actually got a replacement now, which is about the same age. But I've managed to double up the RAM from 2 gig to 4 gig. But it's still an old like Windows 7 Intel Core Duo. For your mountain cameras, fairly basic will suffice. And many people choose to use a mini PC or a Raspberry Pi even for these things. ASI Air, ASI Air Plus and all those things, the little red boxes you see, they're basically a Raspberry Pi in fancy packaging. There's not much computing power there. And it doesn't need to be. If you're currently running your rig via something along the lines of a Synscan handset, you might consider getting one of these little PC things because when your mount is connected via ASCOM drivers to a PC or laptop, then you're able to run your session through apps such as APT, which I use, or Astrophotography Tool. Nina is a real popular one. And if you get something like an ASI Air, it, or it has its own programming within it. But these will allow you then to go into the world of like plate solving, autofocusing, remote control. You could sit inside with your cup of coffee in a nice warm while you're controlling your mount, like Quiv the Lazy Geek. But anyway, I don't want to talk about those. I want to talk about the PC that you'd use for stacking and processing your images. Because that's the one that's going to need to be a bit more capable. There are no set specifications that you have to get. And hopefully today's video will just sort of shed a little bit of light on uh, what you'd be looking for. And in general, I think if you look up this on the internet, you'll find that a gaming PC suits pretty well. And this here is my gaming PC that I've been using. It might look nice and bling because that's what I was channeling my energies into before astrophotography. But it's built on old tech. It's got the nice new case and fans and cooling system and all that. But the at the heart of it is like 2015-2016 gear. And until now this has been a great computer for me. It's only now running these stacking programs and pre-processing that I'm starting to see its age. This picture of Andromeda was five and a half hours of 20 second exposures. And it took a lot of stacking. In fact, I went to bed and got up and it was still processing. It took six and a half hours on this computer. Yet, what it was built for, gaming, it can still do to a reasonable standard. Because the processor itself is still fairly fast, even by today's standards. 
So to simply say that a gaming PC is what you want for astrophotography is not quite right. It's not quite all there. And do be careful, many people sell gaming PCs that just don't deserve that title. Not these days. Now, real quick for those that don't know PCs, a quick rundown of the components and what we need from those components. Number one, the CPU, Central Processing Unit, i.e. the brain of the computer. Now this will either be made by Intel or AMD, and they're both in competition with each other, so that's up to you. The specs you'll find listed on a CPU will be the number of cores and threads, and the speed that it runs at. For example, my old CPU, an i7-4790K from Intel, had 4 cores and 8 threads, and it ran up to 4.4 GHz. Modern offerings offer many more cores, many more threads, and some of them will run like 5.5 GHz these days. Then number two, the RAM, or Random Access Memory. My old system had 16 gigs of DDR3 RAM. This is quite an old standard. I have now moved up to DDR4, but today's standard is DDR5. Basically, this means that they just get faster and faster. Also, as the years go on, a PC can run more and more RAM. So 16 gigs these days is kind of the minimum you'd go for. I will be looking for a 32 gig kit in future. And then the third most commonly listed specification of a PC will be its GPU, graphical processing unit, or graphics card. Mine is from 2016 and doesn't really cut it these days. But it's not necessary in the applications that I use. Some applications will use GPU acceleration, which means because the GPU is basically like a computer itself, it can help the rest of the computer with its tasks. In my case, I need a GPU because I now have an AMD chip that does not support output to a monitor without one. That's something you want to watch for. And then I'll throw this in as number four. I'll say the platform itself. That is like the motherboard it's on. The whole thing um, helps speed up everything, basically, because like data flows around this motherboard a lot quicker than it did on my last one. And that enables the use of these new, much faster SSDs called NVMe SSDs. Like ten times as fast as the one I had. So, basically, on a very basic level, newer is better. Now before we go on, let's not forget that my last PC was running these programs perfectly well, just a lot slower than a modern PC. So there's no actual need for some new fandangled multi-threaded CPU. You can work on older gear, but the dangers of going too old, uh, personally I think, lie in one thing. Most of these astro processing programs rely on an instruction set called AVX or AVX2 instructions. Don't worry about trying to understand that, I don't. All I know is that they're hard work for a computer. Somewhere around the 2014 Mark 13, maybe a year or two before that, they started to be able to do these. And you're going to need, if you've got something on that sort of borderline territory, to look up the CPU you have in mind on the respective Intel or AMD website. And instructions will be one of the specifications. AVX, AVX2, you need to make sure they're listed. My old laptop won't touch any of these things. So yeah, in a nutshell, 
2013 is a little on the old side. Now to cut a long story short, the opportunity came up to upgrade to a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU on the AM4 platform. And I jumped at it because with the AM4 platform, it's upgradable right up to the fifth generation of AMD chips and they've got some seriously good offerings with lots of cores for the money. So listed on the screen you see now, I have actually three CPUs because as I was making this video I ended up getting my hands on a Ryzen 7 3700X from 2019. So as well as doing the tests on the 1700, I was able to throw the 3700X tests in as well. And we can see 2014 versus 17 versus 19. And what you're seeing here as I talk is each of these CPUs running OSC pre-processing script in Cyril. It's a fairly small data set, it won't take long. But you can see side by side the difference in the speed that these are going through the workload. As for the times, the times displayed on these clips are not the times I'm going to display in the end. Because the very fact I was recording the screen slows everything down. So I've put the actual times it takes when it's doing nothing else. Each of these systems have been overclocked. Overclocking might sound scary to most, and it was to me. But I'm not overclocking for maximum performance. I'm overclocking for a boost in performance over stock while using the same or lower voltages than stock because your motherboard manufacturers tend to use too much voltage for the stock speeds and everything gets a bit warm. My cooling system is in place because I want my PC to run quietly at all times and even when stress testing any of these chips, the fans just don't rise above minimum. It's constantly quiet, even though it's better than stock performance. And that doesn't cost anything, that just costs time, unless you're bad at it. The reason I tell you that is just saying it's fair, you know, I'm getting the best out of each of these CPUs. Another thing to note while this is running is that this is not CPU against CPU. This is computer against computer. Because we're also taking into account that when these Ryzen CPUs are converting my DSLR files, they're doing it all on an NVMe SSD, which is a hell of a lot faster than where the i7 was sending its data. Remember, the RAM is quicker as well in the newer system. You can see here some massive differences in the results. The 4-core 8-thread did not hold well, and, you know, it's older. However, each application is different, and I also ran an identical data set through AutoStackart on the three systems, and these figures were a lot closer together. We're going from the quickest at 2 minutes 18 seconds to 3.5 minutes on the old i7. And then in DSS, I put just lights and darks in and timed literally just the stack process. And that was like 3.5 minutes, almost 6 minutes, and best part of 9 minutes. So yes, big difference, but not nearly as big as we saw in Cyril. So what I think this lot shows is that doubling the amount of cores really helps. Going newer really helps at the faster SSD, faster RAM, albeit marginally faster. Um, the CPU speed, now that's a bit of a confusing one because the Intel clocks in at 4.7 gigahertz and the slowest of the bunch is the Ryzen 1700 which I got up to 3.8 but as a desktop machine it feels a little bit lazy it's just not as snappy however 
under load when you're doing these applications is perfectly fast enough. I don't notice the 3700X being any slower than the 4.7 gigs on the Intel. And the reason being, it's not just about clock speed. Because the Ryzen does more per clock than the Intel. Right then, summary time. If you can afford to do it, you just buy the biggest, baddest system you can get. It's fast, loads of cores, nice graphics card in case you're using programs that need it. It's not a problem if you're not on a strict budget. If you are, and like me you had to go a few years back to buy second hand gear, I have to say that Ryzen had the offerings over these last few years with the higher core count than Intel although Intel have fought back and they fought back well and then Ryzen are fighting back again so modern CPUs they trade blows in general the consensus is through watching loads of reviews on CPUs that Ryzen are the better for productivity and Intel are the better for gaming if you're looking for an all-rounder PC, the choice is yours. Just remember, don't be struggling with something pre-2014, because it will be a struggle. I do hope this info helps in your next purchase or upgrade for your PC. But before I go, I've got to say a huge thank you to all my subscribers. I have hit the magic 1000 mark so that means i'm now a youtuber and i gotta open with hey what's up youtube it's your boy nugs here it ain't gonna happen don't worry about that but seriously i do thank everyone for watching subscribing liking commenting the likes and comments are really the things that help most um, and it's not helping me, I'm not getting paid at this juncture. And when I do, if I do, it'll be peanuts. It's helping this information get out to others and making more of a community of this. People help each other out in the comments as well. So I would really appreciate that interaction. Doesn't take much. Thank you very much for what you've done already. If you haven't subscribed, obviously do so. And I hear stories of YouTube messing up, or the YouTube algorithm messing up, and people not getting notified, so I think you've got to click the bell as well. I am starting to sound like a YouTuber, aren't I? Right, I'm out of here. Do tune in next time. I'm Nugsy, and this is Cheap Astro. Bye.